Hi everyone, welcome to Uplift at Home. My name is Bethany. I am a grant writer uh, here at Uplift. So if you have participated in our groups before, you won't recognize my face. But today I am here to read a story called Ida Always uh, that we have read in my house before. I have a daughter and we have read this book both when we are um, coping with grief but also when we are coping with change. And so this seemed like an especially good book to read right now, given the fact that most of us, all of us, are dealing with a lot of changes uh, in today's world. So with no further ado, this is Ida Always by Karan Levis and Charles Santos. Gus lived in a big park in the middle of an even bigger city. Buildings grew around him and shifted the shape of the sky. Zookeepers poked in and out. Visitors came and went. But every morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out of his cave and spent his day with Ida. Ida was right there, always. When Gus tossed the ball, Ida was there to catch it. And when Gus sprayed water, Ida was there to splash him right back. They chased and raced until school bells rang. Then the two friends flopped onto their favorite rock while the city pulsed around them. I wish we could see it, Gus sighed. You don't have to see it, feel it, said Ida. Listen. They heard buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. That's the city's heartbeat, said Ida. It's right here with us, always. When the sky grew dark, Gus and Ida waved goodnight and crawled off to their caves. With the subways humming underground, they added their snores to the sounds of their city. Every day was always the same. Until one morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out. But Ida wasn't there. Gus lumbered to Ida's cave. He heard her breathing, coughing, snoring, sleeping. He sat in their sunniest spot and waited. The coffee carts ground their beans and the squirrels swabbled over crumbs. Visitors shuffled in, keepers bustled about. Ida had never slept so late. Snow monkeys and taxicabs screeched, ice cream trucks jingled. Still, I didn't come. Keeper Sonia came instead. Sonia told Gus that Ida was very sick. Usually there's a way to make a sick bear better, but this time was different. Ida wouldn't hurt, but she would get tired and too weak to swim and play. Then one day, when her body stopped working, Ida would die. Sonia's voice was soft. But the words felt rough to Gus. His insides churned. His chin shook. The sky rumbled. Gus, ru Gus rushed to his friend. Don't go, he growled. Don't go, don't go, don't. Ida growled right back. Together they stomped and snarled, their growls turned into howls, so loud they filled up the zoo, rising higher than skyscrapers, scaling pigeons, surging towards stars.
and then they stopped. Two friends folded into one shadow and slumped quietly on the rocks. Two bare noses sniffled, two bare breaths panted, two bare hearts echoed each other's beat. A plane roared overhead. Gus and Ida wondered where it was going. They wondered where Ida was going, too. They wondered and guessed and imagined as they whispered nose to nose. Wherever I go, said Ida, I bet I'll always smell your fishy breath. That made Gus smile. He wasn't sure if he should, but Ida was giggling, too. They let their laughs bounce back and forth between them. From then on, Ida spent most days in her cave. She slept a lot, but she didn't hurt. The keepers took good care of her, and Gus helped. He gathered her favorite toys and fishy treats. He brought her visitor's notes. There were growling days, and laughing days, and days that mixed them up. Sometimes Ida needed a moment alone, and sometimes Gus did too. But at the end of each day, Gus always told Ida, I'll miss you. And Ida always told Gus, I'll miss you too. They would cuddle until the sky grew dark and the lamps of the city clicked on. They would wave goodnight a thousand times then wave a few times more. Then, one sunny day, while Gus smoothed her fur, Ida curled into quiet. Her eyes fluttered shut, and they didn't open anymore. Gus pressed one last pat into Ida's paw. The paper shared the news. The city cried. For days, the zoo was filled with goodbyes. Now, when keys click and shoes clack, Gus crawls out of his cave, knowing Ida won't be there. He dives and swims alone, and he eats his lunch with Sonia. They roll Ida's favorite yellow ball. Some days, Gus forgets. He looks for Ida on the rock, in her cave, behind the waterfall. When he remembers she isn't there, he rests in the shadows. But even in the shadows, the sounds of the city reach him. He hears buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to soak in the sun. He listens to their city pulsing around him. He remembers that Ida said, you don't have to see it to feel it. The sidewalks tap and the streets hum. Gus's heart beats. Ida is right there, always.
the end. So one of the things that I like best about this book is that it helps us remember that even as things are changing, we can find things that are staying the same. For Gus, that's the sound of the city around him. And while the sounds around us right now might sound a little different than they have before, we can find other things that are still the same as always. And even as things are changing, we can find the things that stay the same and find comfort in them. Thank you for joining Uplift at Home. I hope you'll watch some of our other videos.